And we are pleased to join him now from Montreal to talk a little bit more about this deal. Pierre Carl Pelletier, thanks very much for your time today. We appreciate it. Good afternoon. What was your reaction when you found out that your deal was approved? Well, as you uh, as you know, you know this <laughs> this transaction has been ongoing for for many months and uh, even years. Um, for on our side, it's been quite a while, quite a journey. So um, I guess that you know we should say that we're not we were not completely surprised. Uh, for the last few weeks, we've been negotiating with uh, with the minister with I said you know, and then therefore um, considering that you know we met what there were expectations and we agree on contractual arrangement, then therefore uh, we would not we were not surprised that you know the deal would be approved and uh, the license transfer uh, from uh, uh, Shaw slash Remobile to uh, Quebec Avido don't will take place. So as it was mentioned and announced last Friday. Yeah, well, you mentioned that back and forth with Ottawa. What was that process like? <clears throat> well, you know, we uh, intervened, um, as you know, because that was also a, quite of a... Uh, an obstacle uh, about Rogers meeting against uh, the bureau, the competition bureau, which was against the transaction. It went uh, first uh, in federal court and then uh, federal court of appeal. Uh, so um, we intervened as a participant, uh, showing that you know we really believe that competition will will be good and strong, uh, that uh, this transaction will will open the door to a fourth uh, operator, a real one, uh, one that will be able to operate on a national basis, certainly on BC, Alberta, Ontario, and Quebec. And we look forward, you know, uh, in the years to come, you know, to grow this footprint. But uh, certainly, you know, regarding those specific regions, uh, we considered that there were no doubt that competition will take place. Uh, regarding also, and I guess, you know, from a uh, competition uh, tribunal perspective, uh, they were able, you know, to find out that pricing uh, was um, in Quebec much lower than elsewhere in Canada. Why? Uh, because the presence of a fourth uh, competitor, and this fourth competitor was Vidéotron. We've been, you know, doing business in the wireless for the last 15 years now, and we've been able to take um, about 23% market share because we offered an innovative product, a better pricing, customer service, things of what you know the competition tribunal was looking for, and then therefore they agree uh, to reject the uh, the bureau. Uh, perspective, and from there, you know, we were missing the the minister authorization, which took place last Friday. And so, when you look ahead now, um, and and you reference market share in Quebec, how much market share do you think you could potentially grab? <clears throat> well, you know, uh, certainly, you know, the the out the hour. Our actual footprint, our historical footprint, you know, for the last 15 years, as you know, is much smaller than uh, the one that we're now looking for. So, and therefore, you know, achieving 23% uh, with, you know, certainly also a, a strong brand. Vidotron had been there servicing customers in the cable industry for the last 50 years. It's a well-known brand. It's a brand uh, attached with the customer service of great, ex uh, of great extent. Uh, so, you know, all this help us ourselves, you know, to be able to achieve what we were able uh, to achieve for the last 15 years in the wireless business. 23% uh, in the wireless, you know, on a national basis is quite a, a, an achievement. Uh, I think that, you know, we're going to take month after month, year after year, but we're certainly going to be, you know, very aggressive uh, taking place and providing, again, innovative products, uh, better pricing, customer service, and uh, what is necessary, you know, to gain market share. Now, obviously, you've, you've outlined a plan to be competitive on pricing and, uh, and, and your hopes on market share. You were not the only interested uh, uh, company in, in the Freedom Mobile business. Uh, uh, there are others like Global Live, for example. Uh, yeah. In their case, they felt the bidding process, um, generally speaking, was unfair. What's your view of that? Um, well, you know, uh, I would not comment on this. You know, uh, I disagree, obviously. 
Uh, and uh, then therefore, you know, I don't have any comments. But what I can say is, um, yes, you know, we're going to be involved in the wireless industry, but as you probably know also, you know, we acquired a few months ago vMedia, which is an internet access provider, yep. a cable provider. It's a TPIA, so we have the capacity, you know, to bundle services, and this is what we're looking for. Again, you know, to offer a package that will be of great interest for our prospective customers. And maybe, are there any numbers you can put around how much you might potentially be willing to spend just on that, on that broader theme of, of scaling and expanding the Videotron national mobile network? Well, you know, uh, there's uh, two significant bucket, I would say, you know, of expenses. Uh, one is uh, the usual capital expenditures. Uh, in fact, you know, in terms of providing this specific situation, it will be about building the network and uh, freedom, as you know, already have a network, but uh, our expectation and also our obligations, since you know we bought Spectrum in the last auction, uh, what we call the 3,500, oblige ourselves you know, to build the network until we're using the other people network, others company, on an MVNO basis. But our obligation is to build. So we intend to build, so then therefore, a significant portion of our capital expenditure program will be to build Built, you know the network the second thing which of, is also of great importance and we've been you know doing this business for the last 15 years and we participated in all the auctions to make sure that we will be able to get spectrum to provide you know a, a good quality for our network and then therefore for our customers is you know what will be the price of the next auction for spectrum uh, there will be two sp auctions coming in in the next few years, uh, when those auctions will take place, at this time, it's not completely uh, stopped. And, you know, we'll find out very shortly, I guess. Mm -hmm. But that will be also of importance in terms of capital expenditure. So, you know, this is a business that we're familiar with. You know, we spend about uh, between 600 and 800 million every year in our Vidotron uh, network. In, and then therefore, uh, it's not only for wireless, obviously, uh, it's for our entire business, which also, you know, will bring uh, additional assets to our uh, freedom um, platform and network. So it's part of doing business. Uh, we're familiar with it. Uh, we were providing in the past good customer service, good product, good network, mm -hmm. and we intend to doing so, and this goes you know, through capital expenditure, which is, because this industry is capital inten intensive, an obligation if you want to be a serious player in the business that we're considering. Pierre Carl, before I let you go, uh, the industry minister w was, uh, was pretty clear that um, he wants to see that success of a fourth national player, but he does want to see competition because of all the feedback he got from Canadians who were frustrated with their pricing. I mean, if we don't end up seeing the kind of competition the government has said it wants to see, how would you feel about opening up the market, for example, to foreign telecom providers, which some have asked questions around? Well, this is a you know a matter of uh, public policy, and uh, I don't think it, it's for me you know to have an answer or a comment on this. But you know what I can say is that the minister is right. You know, prices are too expensive in Canada, and you know when you compare again, you know, pricing in Quebec compared to the rest of the country, then therefore you'll find out that there's a significant difference. And and I guess that uh, this is certainly uh, facts that was provided to the minister, which uh, basically convinced him that we need a fourth operator. And the fourth operator proved, you know, as we say, you know, the, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. We did it. So there's no reason that we're not going to be able to do it you know, in the future in this new footprint. And we look forward to get this pricing for the benefit of Canadians.